Hello everybody, this is Boaz Feiler. I'm your friendly neighborhood evolutionary astrologer and with my wife beater underneath. I was thinking if I should change for the video and then I said, nah. You know, but since I'm Israeli, I only recently understood that this is named a wife beater. And I found it absolutely terrible and amazing. Because in, in Israel, we call it a grandpa uh, undershirt so this had a very positive image for me and suddenly like two months ago I heard it was named a, a wife beater oh gosh so let's get to astrology so we're talking about the evolutionary astrology message for the week between the 9th and the 16th of September 2017 I'll try to keep it as short as I can we have an interesting week ahead today the 9th Mercury went into Virgo. Mercury, our mental capacities and the way we navigate our life uh, forward, the way we input and output information, disseminate information and interact with our surroundings goes into its ruling sign Virgo. Everything concerning these mercurial subjects works more perfectly Virgo, correctly Virgo, um, efficiently. Virgo when Mercury is at its domicile so we we can feel that all these subjects that have been a bit lost through this Mer Mercury retrograde are now pulling back into their places uh, Georgia wants to say hello Georgia I know that every time I'm doing a video you have to say hello did you see that tail <laughs> I'm sorry for that. you want to say hello but come, 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 say hello to people, hello, yes, you are a star, people all over the world know you, yes, because you always interrupt us in the videos, I'm sorry, so, uh, yeah, please, I'm trying to, I'm trying to do a video, okay, I know you don't care much for astrology, but I do, but then what do you mean it's bullshit, it's not, it works, it works she's the scientific kind and we're going to talk about that later on um you see because we have an opposition in the sky coming up it's going to peak at the 27th of uh of this month but we can feel it already and that that opposition of course is the opposition between jupiter and Uranus. so let's say georgia is Uranus, okay and she's much more scientific she's um mentally bent into using her cerebral capacities and her higher mind everything is logic a bit detached from everything that is touchy-feely and spiritual okay so we have science on the one hand we have progress on the one hand we have um, uh, the cerebral activity on the one hand and on the other pole we have Jupiter fate religion nature and nat and just being natural you know so Jupiter can look at, at, at Uranus and say, wow, this, this guy is so complicated. He doesn't even know um, who he is and what he is. He's forgotten his simplicity. And Uranus can look at Jupiter and say, this guy, I mean, look at his nails. He's so uncultured. He's so behind. And if he's going to keep up with his happy-go-lucky ways, he's not going to get anywhere. And Jupiter goes on and says, you know, this life is supposed to feel like freedom. And Ryan says, really? Well, if you might make it a better world for everybody, because everybody is equal, then we have to get up from our asses and work and, and, and go forward. So Jupiter looks at him, everybody is equal? What are you talking about? Only people who believe what I believe are, are, are right, you know, all the others are, are, are ignorant. So there, there's two different mind frames uh, interacting here in opposition. We have science and religion, we have progress and, and, and uh, the natural, we have um, the hippie way uh, on the one hand and the new age way on the other and there's a difference 
there's a difference because one is is about uh, living your life peacefully and the other is about making this a better world Georgia you can't keep on disturbing us bye bye she's complaining so this is happening on the 27th right and we can see it both in our personal lives and in our collective lives so we can see how different parts of the society that are more religious or spiritually bent and Jupiter in its lower lower energy could be even uh, bigoted and and racial okay it's my truth or the highway if you don't believe what I believe if you're not part of my race then you're out the door okay that's the lowest kind of Jupiter so we can have we can have religious extremism we can have all kinds of people go, um, working to bring this into a more spiritual or or uh, or a natural way of life on, on the other hand we have Uranus which is high-tech which is progress which is the quickening which is technology which is science that says listen we can't we can't put our feet up anymore we have to start walking and walking fast we have to start running forward so we can feel that tension you know between wanting to put our feet up and enjoy ourselves and knowing that this life should feel like freedom and then and then you know this Uranus on the other hand really on our shoulders saying hey we have to do this we have to do this we have to do this now so just take it easy just take it easy and 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 build a bridge between these two energies so they can meet in the middle take your higher mind and take your spiritual endeavors and 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 put them together because they have to walk together through this world if we want to move forward on the grounds of reality we have one spiritual leg and we have one material leg one spiritual leg and one material leg and if one is shorter than the other then we limp and we don't walk straight so what else and um, on the 12th the moon is going to be in Gemini and it's going to square Mars and Virgo a lot of cerebral activity that day just take the time out put the volume down put the pace to a slower pace don't put so much cerebral activity um, don't, don't let yourself get caught in too much cerebral activity especially one that involves a lot of criticism towards people in your surroundings and especially uh, you know since it's Mars it could be also feisty a lot of testosterone there so regarding ideas and, and, and imperfections and malfunctions so just chill you know don't let those martial testosteronic uh, energies uh, conquer you or get the best of you on the 13th the moon is going to be opposing Saturn squaring Chiron another sensitive day we can touch the places we are hurt in and heal them if we're not too doomy and gloomy and if we do it with a lot of tender love and care don't be too mad at yourselves or other people on the 13th on the 14th Venus is on the North node it's gonna be there around the 13th to the 15th and when Venus the planet of satisfaction and our five senses and our um, our, our feeling of uh, self-value and love and relationships and assets and our own bodies goes on the North Node this is an important time this is a time that we can visualize how we want our life to look like or feel like with these Venusian subjects so take some time to answer with a better answer the subject of contentment in your life of being content through love and relationships being content with one's own body and um, working on my self-esteem and self-value and with assets and money of course all of these 
subject. You know, the, the, the North Node is a mathematical point in the sky. It's a, it's a vortex of energy comprised from the path of the moon around the Earth and the Earth around the Sun. So every planet that gets there is really intensified, really intensified. Utilize that time that Venus is intensified to create a little ceremony for yourself in your life. So it's on its height on the 14th, but we can do it 13th, 14th, or 15th. Mercury is getting up to Mars again. It was there when it was retrograding a few weeks ago, and now it's catching up to Mars again. So again, we need to be careful with what we speak, how we speak, and, and what we say, and don't blurb out things that would later bring on severe consequences. Don't jump in the pool before you check how deep the water is. This is a time that is more um, prone to accidents both on the roads and at home so just be more careful and more logical and breathe before you speak or or think before you do something because we could be too impulsive and too caprizic with this kind of energy and that's on its height on the 16th and dissipates afterwards the sun all through this week was is, is squaring saturn it's on its height on the 14th and that Sun square Saturn can bring up several issues. First of all, it's a feeling that I need to deal with more responsibility that I don't want to deal with. I don't want to grow up. I don't want to mature. But ugh, this life, I just wanted to rest a minute. And there you go, piling me up with challenges again. You know, that's the feeling of the square. And it can also bring up subjects between fathers and sons and between us and patriarchal figures in our life in general not only our father but our bosses or the system clashes and 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 actions that are needed regarding these subjects in our life and generally fathers and sons is 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 son saturn and of course the square is a challenging aspect but this can also bring up other questions to the table like what is my career, Saturn, and what I do in front of other people, Saturn, connected with who I am, the sun, with the light I came forth to shine, with my destiny and, and my identity? Are they one and the same? Are they totally different? How can we bridge that? Action is needed. So that's on its height on the 14th. On the 15th, we have the moon in Cancer, which is already very emotional. And not only is the moon in Cancer, it's, it's opposing Pluto. So drama, down, put the volume down. Getting caught in the moment and being too total or being too obsessive or being too compulsive or just not seeing things in a detached way on a strategic viewpoint and, and getting too much in the, in the momental storm. So just, you know, yeah. And 15th is a day to really become a little bit more detached and more logical and be careful not to dig too deep emotionally so you could hurt yourself. <laughs> you know, sometimes if we dig inside too deep, we can create a new wound. So on the 15th, be kind. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to other people around you, especially family members. So Sirius is going to square Uranus. It's on its height on the 17th, but we can feel it already all through the week. And Sirius is all about what we give and what we receive in this world, the plenty that we provide. And Uranus, of course, is about renewal. It's about change that needs to happen. It's about um, an adaptation that needs to occur. It's about walking forwards with these subjects. So it could bring up a lot of questions of, Am I giving too much, receiving too little? Am I giving the right things? Am I receiving the right things? How can I um, create a renewal within these capacities you know, of giving and receiving in my life, which are essential to every human being? You know? um, usually we can disconnect from things that are dear to us, when we have such an aspect with Uranus. Just be minded about what you desert for your walk forwards. 
okay? And be careful not to throw away the baby with the bathwater. So, that's about everything I had to say for this week. I want to thank you for listening, and of course, for private lessons, courses in evolutionary astrology, or just any question you might have, and private consultations, of course. I'd be more than happy to hear from you. Have a fabulous week. This is uh, Boaz Fader signing out. Goodbye.